Oh, fuck. Yo, what up, fam? Welcome back to the channel. It's the third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the third, as you know. And we're here breaking down rap music. We've been on this NF train. We still got a long way to go, to be honest, on this train. Probably like at least six, seven more songs before he drops his new album. But a gift and a curse has happened. Drake's dropped a new track after the Raptors have won the world championship for basketball. Now this is a gift and a curse for two reasons. Because I personally like Drake. Whether you consider he has ghost writers that write all his music, or you have a consideration like I do that someone needs somebody to spark his imagination when it comes to writing these flows. All his flows sound very similar, so unless he has the same ghostwriter since before he was ever signed, I personally don't believe there's no chance that someone's writing all of his shit. But that's not even really the reason for the gift and the curse. That's the gift because I like him. The curse is that a lot of people that subscribe to this channel aren't really the biggest fans. And you know, that's up to y'all to, you know, form y'all's own opinion on the dude but I personally think he puts out dope shit. The other gift and the curse is that we got a new track before a new album comes out, but it happened to be because the Raptors won the world championship and I am from San Antonio. So that's a pain spot for me because the reason they won was because Kawhi Leonard had a falling out with the Spurs and he went to Toronto and won in his first year. That's that bullshit. I'm probably one of the people who despise the Golden State Warriors at an extreme level but I despise Kawhi Leonard's exit from San Antonio even more so that I wanted them to win and I wanted Kawhi to lose. But the boy put on a clinic so I can't really be too mad because he played his ass off. He played like Kobe Bryant played when he was on trial for the rape case back in the day. Played like his life depended on it, like Dave Chappelle says. That's neither here nor there. We're here to react to this new track by Drake and we're gonna see what the boy got. Because normally these one-off tracks that are not really radio friendly by Drake they normally have some good bars. So let's just get right on into that shit and see what we got. So apparently there's two new tracks, Ometra, if that's how it's pronounced, and Money in the Grave featuring Rick Ross. But the single is gonna be that Ometra track. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop off into that one and see what we got. For real like that? I guess you want all the spotlight, huh? And the other one's just chilling over there. I just got done golfing, so if I look like shit, that's why. Look at my history. I'm trying to see what's different from that guy in the rich of me. The mm. only thing I see is custom miles from Tiffany and some gunners that'll hit you out of nowhere like Epiphany. Really, mm. that's some gunners that'll hit you out of nowhere like Epiphany. Like when an Epiphany just like, oh shit, just pops in your head. Some shooters. See that that's a clean line. It's not the it's not the hardest bar to catch, but it's just clean. And some gunners that'll hit you out of nowhere like Epiphany. Really, that's it to me. Aside from the obvious, man, the changes in scenery. Testing me, gon' have my niggas testing machinery. They mm. said that they happy, my man, that's not how they seem to be. Testing me, gon' have them testing machinery. Talking about those clappers. Talking about those yoppers, those choppers. And they say that they're happy. That's not how it seemed to be on the outside. You can say you're happy about my success, but deep down, I know you're just hating. You're a hating ass motherfucker. They say that they happy, my man, that's not how they seem to be. The boy, he wild and peaceful, rest in peace, Tina Marie. Mm. Ethics and values, mob traditions, old fashioned, monopoly action. Ronnie Vine up Brentwood like he's still in Akron. Monopoly action. Like you're buying up all of the all the properties. Bronny, talking about LeBron James, buying up Brentwood like he's still in Akron. This is fire. The lyrics are fire. I already don't like the album cover though. Cause my boy did us wrong. Never gonna forgive. Never gonna forget either. Find a print, well, like he's still in Akron. A lot of pain, a lot of passion. A lot of relaxing while other niggas is overreacting. That's how we continue down the path of Jordan and Jackson. Ooh. That's some insight for y'all even if no one's asking. Let this is a first reaction, so I gotta pause. So if you think that I'm pausing at the wrong spots, I don't know what spots to pause. I've never heard the song before. So just deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Make like a pickle and deal with it. He said, that's how we continue down the path like Jordan or Jackson. Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson. That's how we continue the path to this goat status without saying goat status. You just know because those are the two goats. King of pop and the goat of basketball, arguably. And then he says, here's some insight for y'all even though you ain't asking. Like I'm throwing my two cents. My two cents is free. A new sense. Who sent? You sent from me? 
My two cents is more is worth more than your own thoughts. So here it is. Take it. You're welcome. Insight for y'all, even if no one's asking. Last year, niggas really feel like they rolled on me. Last year, niggas got hot because they told on me. I'm about to call the bluff for anybody that fold on me. I'm mm. buying the building at every door that closed on me. He said, I'm calling the bluff of every hand that folded on me. Like every handout that said no, I'm calling y'all's bluff but I'm buying the building of every door that closed on me. That's a bar. And he says that multiple times. He says it in one of his songs, I forgot what album, but he says, I should make everybody go through security clearance at my high school reunion. They treated me like shit back then, but now they see who I am. So I'm just gonna stun on them and make them go through security clearance, just so they can understand how important I am. That's like the ultimate revenge buying the building of the door that closed on them. Everybody that said no, now you got to go. Buying the building of every door that closed on me. Yeah, Laura Piana and Brioni, the one and only. Mm. Champagne Papa, the love doctor. Your baby mother called me when she lonely. My tailor Ooh. see me twice a week, he like my homie. For Your baby mama called me when she lonely. My tailor see me twice a week, he like my homie. That's next level gentleman shit. You got that kind of bread to spend just on tailoring, just on clothing? Tailoring is not cheap, in case you know. A custom suit just from men's warehouse ranges between like $900 and $1,300. Much less a custom suit from Armani or a Gucci. That shit off the rack is like $2,500. Much less getting it custom fitted and custom made for yourself specifically. It's like flexing your money without talking directly about your money, which is even harder of a stunt. Because those who know, know, and those who don't, don't. Like my homie, forever grateful, forever thankful. Diamond necklace, but she wears it on her ankle. The bitch is trendy. Ooh. My enemies send each other the text that they can never send me. I'm banking two million a show for the residency. Nevada Gaming Commission in a frenzy. How much money can this casino lend me? Mm. I'm banking two million a show for this residency. Not residency, because that don't rhyme. The bitch is trendy. Residency puts the enunciation on the wrong syllables to make it make sense. And then the, the Nevada Gaming Commission is in a frenzy. How much can these casinos lend me? He's gambling away so much money that these casinos are worried. That the Nevada Gaming Commission, who oversees billions of dollars in gambling money, is worried about how much one man is taking out. See all this stunting that he's doing without actually calling it by its name? Ripping markers up over shots of the Henny. Vivid memory, can someone send me? A real nigga in a loop. To me, Benny Hanna is pigeon food. It's not a forgiving move. So much we gotta count the 20s up in a different room. To me, Benny Hanna is pigeon food. He's just basically stunning this whole time because he's feeling himself. Because he's the god of Toronto and Toronto just won. This boy is annoying as fuck on the sideline though of basketball games. Like, I just wanna pop him so bad. Like, you ain't out there fucking making all the buckets. You ain't the one that's winning the ring. Yeah, you designed the jersey, but that's about it. He said Benny Hanna is pigeon food. And if you know anything about Benny Hanna, it's not the cheapest place to eat ever. Gotta count the 20s up in a different room. I am just a body that my brothers are living through. Ugh. My connection strictly physical. Everyone. I'm just a body that my brothers are living through. They're living vicariously through him. Drug dealers live vicariously through me. He's bringing them homies up. He's bringing them from the bottom with him. Connection strictly physical. Everyone that's married is miserable. I know that that is not a lifestyle I can give it to. The rise to the top of this mountain has been biblical. Mm. I don't carry cash because the money is digital. It's the American Expressor, the debt collector. Uh. Hailing all the way from the Mecca. Got the American Expressor, the debt collector. Hailing all the way from the Mecca. That little flow right there is pretty fire. Our rise to the top of the mountain has been biblical. The wordplay there, literally rise to the top of the rap game, because no matter what you say, no matter what you feel about Drake, you can't deny that the boy is on top, because he definitely is. It's also a literal meaning within the Bible, like when Moses rose to the top of the mountain with blank tablets in his hand, blank stone tablets, and God struck them with his lightning, with his finger, and wrote in the Ten Commandments, talking about himself being God, because he calls himself Six God. He basically is the God in Toronto. You can't even deny it. But such fire wordplay. See, the thing about Drake is he says these things without actually saying them. And if you're smart enough or you're clever enough and you understand hip-hop and lyricism enough, you understand that he's calling himself the God. You understand that he's saying that he's got all this cash and he's flexing without actually having to do it. 
Like you know enough about him to know that this is his life. Away from the Mecca, got something for Trudy and Rebecca. The shit could last forever. The mind controller, the Ayatollah. Mm. I built a bridge to success and had visions of me riding over. Ooh. Step in the room in October gets a lot closer. Haunted houses, I don't know how to count it thousands. Only millions. Now tell your friends I'm not the villain. I don't even know how to count in thousands, only millions. Now tell your friends I'm not the villain. So stop trying to hate on me because I'm not the one that you need to be hating. I'm just out here doing my own thing. I envisioned the bridge to success and me crossing over and here I am. Tell your friends I'm not the villain. Send them to Legos, the Turks and Caicos, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago. Never go the same places they go. Separate vacations, a far cry from old Drizzy and slept in the basement. I was never on the path to get into Cambridge. I mean, I was good at doing math, but I'm better with language. Borderline mm. dangerous, approach with caution. A far cry from when Drizzy had slept in the basement, in the basement of his mom's house. As I was never on the path into getting to Cambridge. I was decent at math, I was all right, but I was better at language, which is literally what he's doing right here. Using the English language to his advantage to rise to the top of the game. So sick, so sick like Flyleaf. For all my rock fans out there. Borderline dangerous, approach with caution. I plan to buy your most personal belongings when they up for auction. Uh -huh. Truth be told, I think about it often. The petty king, the overseer of many things. I wish that I was playing in a sport where we were getting rings. I wouldn't have space on either hand for anything. He said, I'll buy all your shit when it goes up for auction. When you run out of money, I'll be there buying your shit. Like Happy Gilmore status when his grandma's house goes up for auction. And then fucking Shooter McGavin comes in and steps in and tries to buy the shit out from under him. That's such a petty move. That's why he says the petty king. I wish we were playing in the sport where they gave out rings because I wouldn't have any space on any of my hands. Because I'd be fucking the champ back to back to back to back ten times over. He, he does a really good job combining sports and rap because they kind of go hand in hand, especially basketball and rap. For some reason, basketball stars want to be rappers and rappers wish they could be basketball stars. Wouldn't have space on either hand for anything. Mm. West Hollywood, know my presence is menacing. Costa Nostra, Shady Dillons, Racketeering. The syndicate got their hand in plenty things. The things that we've done to protect the name are unsettling. But mm. no regrets though, the name of Echo. Years later, none greater. Death to a coward and a traitor, that's just in my nature. The name will echo years later. No matter what, even after I'm gone, the name will still echo around. And he says, death to a coward and a traitor. Because they basically both one and the same. That's just in my nature. Yo, shit was fire, son. I don't know what to tell people that don't like Drake. I understand reasons why you don't like him. Maybe he's not grimy enough for you. Maybe he doesn't spit the realest bars ever like our boy NF does. He doesn't talk about real shit in life. Because that's not his M.O. He didn't grow up the same way. He didn't have that same negative household. He talks about real shit for what he knows. And what he knows is growing up middle class, Jewish, half white, half black. That's starting from the bottom. That might even be harder to be a rapper. Because you don't have that experience to talk about what normal rappers talk about. Now we're here. Brought all his homies with him. Reconciled with his dad. So that's the shit that he talks about. That's real for him. It might not be anything that we can resonate with. But that doesn't mean that he can't spit fire about it. So I understand why you don't like him, some of y'all. But I counter the fact that the boy is undeniable. He's got the X factor. He's got what people are looking for. Regardless if he spits the pop shit like God's plan. Regardless if he spits the fucking deep cuts. Regardless if he just spits smoothly over smooth beats. Regardless if he's spitting about women and his issues and his problem with his relationships and how he can't trust. You know, those are all real life for him. That song is fire. I don't want to even look at the cover. I don't even want to see the fact that that championship is with Kawhi. But I can't hate for the rest of my life because the boy done showed up and did his thing. So it is what it is, you know? Gotta move on. Maybe it partly was the Spurs organization fault. Who knows? We'll never know. Only him and Pop and his uncle will know. And I should have known that based off of Kawhi's demeanor when he was with the Spurs, very quiet, non-talkative, that he wasn't going to say anything. If he was going to dip, he was going to dip in the ghost of the night. But you can't do that when you are when you are the face of San Antonio, Texas. When you're the face of the franchise that the city loves so dearly. Anyway, I'm ranting because this is how I feel about Kawhi. But congratulations to Toronto. Drake, stop being a fuckboy on the sidelines, please. Drake, you can't cheer for your team that hard whenever you cheer for 10 other teams in the league. Yes, I understand it's your hometown, but fuck all that. Love one team, 
Respect the other teams, but don't fanboy. Boy, you done got the tattoos of KD and Curry. Appreciate y'all being here, everybody that's watching this. Love the family, love yourself, love the third fam. Spread out that good and positivity in the world. And I'll see y'all guys on the next video. Peace out.